Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? Let's get right into our village anthem. Y'all ready? One, two, three. Let's go. Let's talk about it. Uh, let's sing. Because together we can do anything where we can be ourselves with no shame. So come join the village with all things Lisa. Don't forget the W. Hello, everybody. Now, we are going to jump right into the subject of daddy issues. This is what's going to happen now. I'm not going to get all teary-eyed. I'm not going to cry boo-hoo, boo-hoo on this camera, no. But if you see that I have stopped the video and come and come back, you know that, okay, she probably got a little emotional. I want, I don't want this video to be about boo-hoo and crying. I want to really empower women who, who are going through this. Who may feel like I think I might have some daddy issues okay so what I did is I wrote you know I told you all I'm, I'm, I'm going through menopause okay I have to write things down because I'll get off the camera and say oh, I, I forgot to say this no I'm not I'm gonna say everything that needs to be said from me today so I wrote some notes and I just put them on little sticky pads okay little sticky notes do you have daddy issues and let me just start by saying, for a long time, it wasn't until I was in my 40s that I figured out that I had daddy issues. Now, why is that? Because all my life, I walked around like, hey, my mother raised us to be strong black women. I can handle anything. I, okay, I don't need no daddy. Okay, if he gone away, he don't, he don't want to be around. I don't need him because I don't need a man. That's kind of how... Throughout, when I'm telling you I was oblivious to me having daddy issues, no one could ever talk to, could have ever told me when I was younger that you have daddy issues. Because I said, baby, please, no, I don't. But I did, in fact, have daddy issues. Let me just explain something. Okay, let me look at my notes here. Okay, bear with me because I want to make sure that I get everything that I want to say. Okay. I don't know what started right to this day. I don't know what hit me to make me feel like I, I do have daddy issues. But I do know that as I got older, like I said, in my 40s, every time I mentioned, you know, how my children, they they at least had their father to tell them that he, he loved them, he hugged them, he kissed them, he played with him, they knew they knew him. I I said, and then I said, I didn't have that. And then every time I said it, I just started bawling, crying, crying. And it was it was surprising to me because I'm like, why am I crying? I said, why do why is it that every time I talk about this, I started I started crying. So then that, that started making me think, hmm, I don't know what what that's what that's coming from. Well, that's coming from the fact that I was walking around like I didn't have daddy issues, but I did have daddy issues. And what was happening, it was affecting, it affected the way that I chose a man. It affected the way that I held on to a man. And, okay, let me just give you some clarity. On this channel, I have already spoken to you all about uh, me and my late husband, uh, who, like I said, late husband. We were together ever since we were teenagers, okay? Now, I also said that right before he passed, we had just celebrated 25 years of marriage, okay? Now, during those 25 years of marriage, completely faithful, not another man, not another thought. Everybody, my friends who know me, my parents, my, my, my mother, my sister, as a what married woman, married to him, never been unfaithful, never had a man hold my hand, touch me in no type of way. But as his girlfriend and he is my boy, he is my boyfriend. Both of us was playing around. So before we got married, yes, we we played around. But as his wife committed, now for many many years, people say, "Oh, Derek has been faithful to you as my husband." So he always said to me that he was faithful to me as my husband, not as my boyfriend now, but as my husband. So. Hey, I can only count for me, okay? He, I was completely faithful. Now, I don't mean that he wasn't, but I can only say that I know I was faithful, so we got that out of the way. I'm going somewhere with this. When I got with my husband, things, how 
how can I say it? Because I do have grandchildren by him. And, okay, so when I got with my husband, if I was if I was complete, if I didn't have daddy issues, if I wasn't walking around with a void in me that I didn't even know that I had, I wouldn't have ever went with him. And see, that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't have ever gotten with him. Um for no reason. And if I did get with him, I, I, I would have quickly said, to the left, to the left. <laughs> with all due respect to my late husband. I loved him to death. Well, I loved him. But I wouldn't have never, I wouldn't have never taken that any further. But why did I? See, here's the thing. I was walking around looking for a fem I mean, masculine, uh, masculine figure in my life. Because I didn't have it. And so this is what I used to, what hit me. I remember one time saying to them, to my daughters, uh, because you all know that I told y'all that he was in, incarcerated for most of their lives. So, but I remember when they got older saying, uh, I don't know what it's like to have a daddy hug me. I don't know what it's like to say for a daddy to say, I'm proud of you, baby. Come here, give me a hug. I don't know what it's like to say, uh, I love you, for a daddy to say that. Now, my mother said it all the time. She still does to this day. I don't know what it's like, but I was longing for it and didn't know it. So that longing and that uh, desire that I had for that masculine energy, for that love from a male, then it played out in other parts of my life. It played out in me choosing uh, to stay uh, in a relationship that really didn't serve me, you know. Um, now, some people may say, "Well, you know, you can have your mother and father with you all in, all your life and still make decisions like that." You know what? That is true. But I'm today. I'm speaking of how I move because of, and I know this today, not having that that feminine, that um, masculine man or that masculine. Uh, figure in my life. No one to ever protect me from any. I'm gonna tell my daddy. You know, people say, I'm gonna tell my daddy. Well, I didn't have a daddy to tell. Where is he? Or when people say, uh, bring your daddy to school or bring your parents to school. Well, no daddy. Uh, I remember. Yeah, this is where I want to go with this. No disrespect to my babies. But I remember when. Derek first went off to prison. Now, Angel and Devin were used to Derek being in the house. They were just little. They were two and three. Okay? So they were used to him being in the house. And the first night, they didn't hear their daddy come in that door. Oh, it was so painful. But they went to the door, and they just started crying. Especially the oldest. But they just started crying and they would do that night after night until they just got used to the fact that, okay, daddy's not coming home. But it would be so hard for me to just tell, to calm them down because they were missing that father figure. They were missing their daddy. And now throughout their lives, and they can tell you their story, that has played a part on how they have moved in relationships. And now, but I'm going to go back to me, okay? Why then, this is a reason, this is an understanding of, I see, I know this now, why I stayed in a relationship that didn't serve me. It made me so determined to stand by my man. It made me to determine no matter what he did, no matter how much trouble he got into, no matter the bad habits he picked up, stand by your man. And he used to brag all the time about how much his wife, oh, this woman, I got a good one, I got a good one. And you know why I was so determined that to stay even when it didn't serve me, to stay even when it was when I should have walked? Because I, I wanted to hold on to him. I, I felt like, just like he needed me, 
I needed him. And why did I need him when he wasn't serving me right, when serving me, or when he wasn't uh, doing the things that a husband's supposed to do, or doing the things that a father's supposed to do, being there for our children? He was not, and, he, and it, things kept, kept going. Why did I feel the need, so such a strong need to hold on to him? Because I had daddy issues. One daddy had already said I wasn't good enough and already was gone. One man had already said left me. So I didn't want to lose this one. And I didn't make that connection. It didn't click for me until I got older. And like I said, until I got in my 40s, I didn't realize, girl, you got some serious daddy issues. Because when I found myself doing certain things in a relationship, accepting certain things in a relationship, when I say accepting, if you don't, uh, like uh, one person said, what you, what you tolerate, then you inadvertently, you accept, you, you say it's okay. Accepting all these different things that will pop up instead of saying, oh, baby, I'm getting my bags and I'm out of here, or you out of here. I stayed. Now, let me say, this is a difference between there is a big difference between like the vows that you take when you get married for better or worse, for uh, richer and poor and all this kind of stuff. We're not talking about that. We're talking about some serious issues that could be very detrimental to you. See, it's almost like um, if there is a wife who is being battered, who's being beaten by her husband. Do you, do you make that argument with her to say, well, you need to just stay there and keep letting him knock you upside your head. Stay there. Yeah, one day, one day he may take you out, but he is your husband. You did take those vows. <laughs> no, we would never say that. So what I'm saying is this is how serious these daddy issues are because we can be walking around um, and... Well, it's a word that I'm trying to use, but it's not, it's needing, but craving. That's what I'm worried. Craving the affection from a father that we never had, but then we put it all into this man. So whatever he does, it's okay. Because this is my man. He is, he is here for me. Now somebody do love me. I am lovable. You see? And you can break that down too. Yeah, I'm lovable. My daddy never told me he loved me. He never was around. So this man, am I lovable to you? Oh, baby, yeah, you everything. Uh-huh, that's enough for me. Not long ago, I had a conversation with my brother's son and his wife. Because my brother's son, his name is William, he have two boys and one girl, he just had, him and his wife just had a girl not long ago. And this little girl is the apple of his eye. He spoils her rotten. She is, she is a daddy's girl. And so one day, uh, me and his wife were talking, you know, all of us were talking in a she was like, yeah, she said, when she get a little older, we're going to have to do something about that because she is pretty spoiled, you know, because uh, she, she's just crazy about her daddy and her daddy, is, he, she can't do no wrong to her daddy, right? And then she said, because I don't want her to grow up and it's going to be a problem. I said, and I told her, I said, yeah, I get that. I said, but pay attention to what I said, because when I said it, it struck something with me too. I said, I would rather for her to grow up being a daddy's girl than to grow up having daddy issues. And I do. Because at least you know what to, what to expect. You have a model. See, that's the thing. It's women who did not have a model. Nobody, look, let me tell you something. No man to sit me down and say, Lisa, come here, baby. Let your daddy talk to you. You stay away from this type of, don't, look, if this, if he don't do this for you, if he, you stay away from him. And if you, you, you don't, I'm coming after him. You, I didn't have that. So I didn't have a model to follow as far as to what, how to even navigate uh, the world in, as far as men, or, is, is men are concerned. But she does. Because her daddy is going to, he's going to be doting. 
he's going to be what you need. He's going to help her out. He's going to provide for her like he is now. Of course, you are too. I'm talking about the mama. She, she's there too. Of course, you, you can't count us out. But he is going to provide an example for her as to, no, no, you didn't. My daddy, my, my daddy would never did it. My, do you know my daddy? You know, it's going to be a, her reference point. That's going to be her reference point, her daddy. Some of us don't have that reference point. So we just go out here all willy-nilly and we be making some mistakes like I don't know what. But again, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. So if this is you, step one, acknowledge it. And you know, y'all, I'm sorry, this thing. You know, I've been on my weight loss journey. I'm, I'm Hey, I'm going back down, y'all. I'm going back down. We're going to talk about that, too, because one of my uh, subscribers said, uh, I want to see the uh, uh, weigh-in Tuesdays come back. Well, it won't be Tuesday because I'm going to only make videos on Thursday and Friday. I mean, Thursday and Sunday from here on out. But I will put that way in once a month. I'm going to put it back in. We're going to talk about that in another video. So, but anyway, uh, so my clothes sometimes be kind of like falling off of me. But, excuse me. If, oh, I got to tell y'all something too. I know. Hey, we, we're not going to just be all sad and bogged down in this video. I didn't want that because I, I could be in here crying and crying. I don't, I don't know who, all that. I'm not doing that. But y'all see my nails? Now you all seen on this channel, I let you know, my nails grow and I don't like them to grow too long. So what do I do? Y'all see me cut them all off, right? Because I can't hardly move like I want to move with long nails. But I'm going to a special event tomorrow. And I thought, Lisa, go ahead and do something to your nails. Aren't they pretty? Simple? Pretty. Okay. I like to go back to that. First, acknowledge that you do have daddy problems or daddy issues. And it's, it's nothing wrong with talking to somebody. Oh, y'all hear that? Yeah, that's the neighborhood I live in. It's the city. It's the hood. Okay. You know, I'm not a psychiatrist, psychologist, none of that. I'm just speaking from my experience and I'm almost 60 years old now. So I've learned a few things along the way. Okay. And I've learned to still be loving because this one one day I'm gonna find me a good husband, and I'm not clutch uh, close to that. I'm not shut down to that. But there are just things that I I will never ever accept again, because now I learn that even though I never had that father figure, even though that I never had what I will see some people have, you know. And you know now that I'm talking about this, it makes me think of. When my daughter started having children, and I remember going to graduations, the children's graduations or whatever, or seeing the fathers, how they would act with their children. And I was like, oh. I, I'm, I'm telling you, when I, see a, when I see a man being hands-on with his daughter, uh, when it just melts my heart. And it's because that was a craving that was a longing. That was a void inside of me. And instead of taking that and being and using that, you know, like I'll just share that moment with you. Oh, that's nice. No, I took, I allowed that, that whole thing to make me make some bad decisions and bad choices. So, excuse the bells, y'all. The bells are ringing now. So I say, if you feel like, why am I keep on? Why do I keep on getting these same kind of men? And you didn't have a father around. You don't know what it's like to have a father's love. You know, and yeah, we had we have the love of a mother. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it makes us move different in the world when we have not ha had a father to embrace us. It makes us move differently, and you gotta you gotta tap into that, and you gotta even recognize it. To kind of like, okay, let me break this down. And then when you do start doing it, you say, oh, that's why, that's why I keep getting these knuckleheads and letting them put me through all this stuff. And I won't give up at all. Why? Because I know you've heard a lot of people say, I've heard a lot of women say, why do I keep on attracting the same type of man? Why do I keep on spending years in relationship with the same type of man, same man, different face? Do you have daddy issues? Be honest with yourself. And then if you do, it's nothing wrong with talking these things out. It's not even wrong with 
you know, I'm telling you, when I went to grief therapy, grief counseling, whatever you want to call it, I learned a lot about me that I didn't know. Because I kept saying to myself, why am I so stuck? Like I told y'all before, I, for years I was stuck. And it seemed like I just, what am I, I was Derek's wife. I'm, I was his wife. And you would think, and I can say this, no disrespect to my family. You would think that this man was whining and dining me, uh, get, giving me the most expensive, showing me all kind of love, buying me jewels and furs and all that kind of stuff. You would think that the way I grieved, oh, this was, I, I really, really lost um, a man that did so, so much for me. My husband spent 23 years in a penitentiary. Why was I so attached? Y'all get what I'm saying? No disrespect to the 25 years that I spent with him. No disrespect to his memory. No disrespect to my grandchildren, his children. No disrespect. I'm just being open and honest with you all. That sometimes because we have these daddy issues, we can't get it together. We can't let go of some people that we need to let go because they're not good for they're not good for us. They don't serve us. We serve them. Oh, he, my husband talked about his wife. Every time I'm telling you, every time I met any of his friends, you know what they said to me? Oh, he won't stop talking about you. Every time we turn around, he talking about Lisa this, Lisa no I could, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. He, I poured myself into him. I poured all of me into him. But what did I get? You see, again, no disrespect to his memory. What did I get? So this goes to all the young people. You don't have to be, you don't have to wait till you're almost 60 years old. Or you don't have to wait till you're almost 50 or 40. You could be 20, 30. You can even be a, a young teenager having your first boyfriend. Don't look for those, don't look for your daddy and your boy that you date. And let me tell you, it doesn't only have, daddy issues don't only uh, show up in the form of uh, you missing something because he was not in the household or you, you didn't have a daddy around or you don't know who your daddy is. No, 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 no. You can have a daddy in the house that is so no good that he need to get out of the house. And you can be raised in, ha in having daddy issues. And you can say, I never, I don't, I don't me, and I, you can kind of say, swear off all men. Oh, I don't want them. Uh-uh. Because why? Because you think that all men are going to be like your daddy. And that's just not true. All men are not the same. And someone may say, baby, please, yes, they, no, they are not. All men are not the same. On this channel, I have mentioned before that we have, there are some good, solid, stand-up type of guys. I know them. My friends have them. Uh, not perfect. None of us are perfect. We're, as women, we're not perfect. But good, solid guys who love their wives, who take care of their homes, who treat their wives love with love and respect and kindness, they exist. I'm going to give me one, too. He found me. He's going to find me. He just, he just haven't found me yet. You better stop. You better. Okay. <laughs> I was just about to say something like, look, I'm almost 60 years old. You better you better hurry up and start finding me, try to find me. But seriously, we can have daddy issues for so many reasons. Absent or present, we can have daddy issues. But if you do, admit it to yourself. So again, I just wanted to make this video because I thought that this would be good for somebody. Somebody older and somebody younger. So... I am going to get off this camera, out in front of this camera, and I'm going to take all of this stuff off of my face, and I am going to relax and enjoy my... Now, this is Saturday, so you're going to see this video on Sunday, but this is actually being made on Saturday because tomorrow, like I said, I won't be here because... And I may show you all a picture or something. Come in and give you a little short so you can see uh, just how I look before I leave, but 
everybody, if you are looking at this video and you have never seen my face, this is the first time, the first time you've seen me, subscribe to my channel. I have been trying to reach 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch time hours for now almost a year. November the 5th, 5th, I think 5th or the 2nd, but it will be one year since I joined YouTube. I am at um, 637 subscribers now. Y'all, before November come, help me to get those subscribers. Help me to get those watch time hours. And as I mentioned before, a lot of times, if you don't just want to just subscribe to somebody, like I'll subscribe to you, I don't know you. Well, go get to know me. Go look at some of my, I have over 400 videos. Go look at some of them. And I guarantee you, you're going to get a, you're going to get a good feel of who I am. That's why my channel is All Things Lisa, Lisa W. Because I'm, I'm showing every and sharing everything about me, my life. My, even I show my family. Sorry, y'all. You know, uh, so go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already, okay? But I always say this at the end of every video. Have a good day and do it on purpose, y'all. Bye now.